everyone last week on Thursday I went to Jackson's physical shop in North London it was a lot of fun filming the tour and showing you around thank you so much Jackson's for allowing me to do that and I also did a little bit of shopping of course I didn't get too many things predominantly because I wasn't sure if I already had them in those colors next time I would be coming with a swatch book I have taken all of the items out of the bag except for one thing which I put to the side because it seems to be impacting the color lighting situation so um, let's start with Liquitex it's the heavy body acrylics in two colors light blue violet and parchment there is Uniposca in gold PC3M much better uh, in use than PC1M for me personally because the nib is just doesn't have any problems at all it flows once you shake it up you don't need to shake it up throughout the process it's good it doesn't have any um, issues with it then we have this cute little sharpener which I haven't seen anywhere before and it just lay there amongst the pencils and I was like what is this cute thing so it's by Coom and I just realized it now I didn't realize it when I was purchasing it there's a little um, cap here that you unclip and then the sharpener is in here and here is the sharpener and then you put it back in so haven't tried it let's see how it goes I wonder how much of the peeling goes in here like do I use it inside there or do I take it out and use it so we'll try that and then obviously the clip is quite useful because you can just clip it onto your sketchbook if you're on the go somewhere and everything is in one place. Then we have um, Blackwing Palomino pencil. This is a lovely glossy orange finish. I love it. And then we have Spring Green of the Luminance by Karen Dash pencils. A very acidic and <laughs> juicy green. So... Um, that will be kind of for um, accents. Then I have a really lovely analogous color palette. When I saw it in the shop, this is how they were hanging. Now I'll check for the actual swatches and I will tell you the exact arrangement, but basically these four colors were one next to another and I thought they look so, so beautiful. I haven't tried their Burn Sienna, Windsor Newton's Burn Sienna and uh, the others looked like lovely opaque colors which I think would be great for skin tone mixing then we're coming on to paper so not this one but these two are purchased so it's the watercolor block they are by Jackson's and they are watercolor block um, in cold pressed hot pressed and both of them are natural white 300 gsm 15 sheets acid free and the sizing is 3 by 4 and 4 by 6 so these are lovely papers and I use them quite often. I also have the rough. I'll show you all the paper textures in a minute. Last thing for paper which I took away is this watercolor block as well. And if memory serves correctly, it's a rough. There is no um, branding or information on the paper at all, but I have been buying these for years. And I use this paper for swatch cards and that's why I needed a little bit more. Uh, the swatch cards are created with my Swatch Joy stamping set. If you are interested, it's available on Etsy Aliona Creates. And finally, I have a dual brush pens by Tombow Little Leaflet. Again, very easy to refer to all the color palettes and all the colors available and Jackson's acrylics catalog. They have a number of different catalogs for, I think from pastels, watercolors and something else. It literally goes from paints and then everything is in one page and really, really useful. Then you have brushes, you have tools, everything under the roof that you can think of. I think I have another catalog that I will show you. So let's move on to swatches. So I thought we'll do slightly reversed order um, and start with paper. So remember this block I just showed you? I have the same one that I'm coming to an end. So this is the last page and I wanted to show you 
for what I'm using, like I said, with the um, where are Swatch Joy stamp set, like that. So if you were curious how many you can fit in, I basically fit in um, 10 and 3 this way at the bottom. So this is how I fit them in. And on the bigger one, so we've got 13 on this size, and then on the bigger one, I get, so this is six times three, 18 of the swatches on one sheet of paper. And then I have a little strip. So the only thing that is remaining is the strip here. And on the smaller one, which I got, I get this area here, which I keep for little like scraps and swatches, which is really, really useful. I actually constantly need some when I'm creating my own watercolors, for example, then I need to test some colors. Um, I just kind of do it on little strips of paper. Oh, we've got this paper here as well. So we've got the rough and I'll compare all the others. I'll just open these quickly. Okay, so here we have the hot press. So it's going to be smooth. So that's the texture of it. There is no texture basically. Then we have the cold pressed next to it. And you can see the texture immediately. And then here is the rough. So the texture is even more prominent. Hope you can see it. There we go. These blocks come in various sizing. So now let's look at the other catalog that I have. Now this one that I have is slightly taller, the same width, but it's slightly taller. It's from 2018. So I would imagine it has been definitely updated since. And the paper is different. So here the paper is glossy. And here it's more matte and I quite like this sort of um, more contemporary look to it. But basically the same thing goes for the watercolor catalog. And you have everything that is related to watercolor. Again, all the brands and all the colors. So for example, Daniel Smith, you have all the swatches here and core and everything that they're stocking is here. Um, then we have various other watercolor pencils and block materials that are related to watercolor and uh, it goes into paper, uh, water soluble graphites, liners that are water soluble which is really really useful. So you can have a look on one glance. Um, then we have paper and we have brushes, all very good pictures to get an idea of what the brushes look like, really beautifully organized sets and mediums, palettes and all sorts of other things and even books. So these are very useful to have so check them out. Let's start with pencils and pens and then move on to watercolor and then finish with um, acrylic paint. So, firstly we have Spring Green. Actually, it's quite a pleasant color. It's not too, like, too insanely vivid. It's vivid enough to give you that little pop in your painting or illustration but I don't find it like unpleasant. Let me see if I can find a pencil that I think is a little bit uh, too much on the acidic side. Not sure why I thought I had one of those drastic green colors but it looks like I actually don't so I have picked colors that you know are possibly somewhat similar just to see for you what they look like side by side. So this is Derwent Lightfast in grass green. So let's do like a, yeah, no, that's not, that's too, well, it's a little bit too dark. 
to be compared to that color. And then the other color that might be close is apple green. And that's actually a color I really, really love. So no, I don't have anything. And I actually love this color because it has luminosity to it. It has that kind of yellow kind of glow. I mean, if I go into my chartreuse type of colors and try to find some that could be applicable. So I'll take these three. So here we have leaf green. That's even darker and more neutral. So that's not very close at all. And then we have um, Holbein olive yellow. Again, that's leaning towards an olive yellow. And then we have the chartreuse green. So that will be more yellow. Sherbet lemon, just so you can see. Um, once you add a bit of water, it lifts, but it's not going to change dramatically. So let's do that quickly. So I'm just going to melt the pigment here on the paper and you can see it's a lot more yellow. So this is a very good color. It actually is a lovely color palette. And if anything, the closest color seems to be chartreuse green, but you can see side by side, it's uh, green at this one. So I'm actually really happy I got it. It is a color that uh, really will sit quite nicely. It's a really juicy, I'm trying to find the best way to describe it. It's a juicy green, slightly more towards green. If you're looking at a chartreuse green, it probably still could fall under chartreuse green, but slightly closer to a green side than yellow. Now, I want to sharpen this pencil with a sharpener and see if it works. And yeah so it's fitting in here let's see so far it's going okay so it's collecting here i mean there will be a limit to how much you can fill up which i will let you know so this is obviously going from completely un unsharpened so here i'm starting to feel a skip so whether that means i need to empty it i'll try to empty it nothing is coming from the bottom by the way so it's clean. So I've just taken it out and shaken it out. Okay, now it's going again. So yeah, it, you will just feel when it's too full and you can see it as well. It just starts skipping. So at this point again. So if you are working with a sharp pencil and you're using a minimal amount of it when you're on the go somewhere, then I think it's uh, really convenient just to you know sharpen the very tip and that's it. But if you're using pencils a lot, then you would find this quite redundant, this sort of emptying exercise. And I'll try to do it over the bin, just holding this and see if you could do like into a container. Yes, yeah, so that works fine as well. You just tilt it this way and you sharpen it. I'm just doing it into my bin and I've got a sharp tip now. So here we go. That's the tip you get to. Really sharp. Okay, so let's try it out. So you can get fine lines. And then you can have more sort of darker lines as well, which is what I really, really love. And then you can lay it on the side and get a bit of that going on as well. So in terms of comparison, I think they're exactly the same, although no. This one, the matte one, feels softer for some reason. So that's good then. I have two different varieties of the nib. Okay, so that's that. And by the way, you can buy these erasers. When I first bought it, I didn't know, but I learned since. So you can just pull it out like that and you can buy erasers to replace these ones or basically you just pull it out every time you use it up until you get to the end and then you can replace it. And I have my replacement somewhere, I'll show you. You can get them in different colors. So here, I got mine, I think at Jackson's as well, a while ago. These are the black ones to go in with this pencil. 
so that's what they look like set of 10. Actually, while we're at it, I'm just really curious how it would sharpen one of those pencils. So say, for example, I already have a sharpened pencil, but I want to sharpen just the tip of it. So it's going in fine. Yeah. Oh, wow. There you go. And there's barely any of the wood because it just sharpened the very tip of it. How gorgeous is that? So you can have really fine lines. And let's do it with the, well, the Holbein's a bit thinner. The luminance are a bit thicker, so I wonder if that would fit in. It does seem to fit in. Yeah. It got it to that sharp point as well. That's quite impressive. All right, so I am happy with this purchase. What a cute little thing. Okay, so time to look at Uniposca. So before you start using it, you need to give it a thorough, thorough shake and you need to do it before every use. And then what you do is basically, maybe because it's acrylic paint, I'm going to do it at the bottom here to have it with the acrylic the Liquitex paints as well. So then what you do is you have it pointing straight like that and then just go up and down, up and down until you start seeing color coming out of it. First time always takes a little bit long. Okay. And here we go. Okay, well this is like as smooth as butter. So we can try the thinnest line And then you can lay it on the side and you get a thicker line. And then these are the dots you can create. I very often work with like dots in my artwork and the dots are just perfection with this nib size. Very flowy and just gorgeous. And if you wanted a larger area, just be aware which paper you work on because the nib can scratch the paper surface and then you end up with like damaged paper fibers but that's what it is okay next thing watercolors i looked at my winsor newton hand painted color chart and it looks like this is the order it was in the shop. So we've got burnt sienna, light red, Venetian red, and then there's Indian red. I might have skipped that one. I'm not sure because I didn't get it. I got the brown mother. In any case, those are the colors that I got. And they're very, very beautiful. The Venetian red is gorgeous. The light red is gorgeous. The burnt sienna is looking slightly lighter than what I was expecting. I was expecting more sort of this color. And then the brown mother, that's also very, very beautiful. So let's watch them out and see how we get on. Let's start with Burn Sienna. It's PR101. Then we have Light Red. It's PR102. Both single pigments. Another PR101, and this is a Venetian Red. It's the same pigment, but treated in different ways. Gives you a different color. And finally, we have Brown Mother, PR206. And it's a bit more liquid than the others. Okay, so we'll start with Burn Sienna. It's a beautiful color. So immediately what I notice is that its darkest value is not too dark, not too deep. It's actually on a lighter side as far as burnt sienna's come. And then we have light red. So this one has a bit more opacity to it. The burnt sienna was completely transparent. Opacity level here is not too strong. Definitely can get to a darker value in this color. And then we have Venetian red. So 
that's going to be super, super pigmented, super opaque. And as you can see, darkest value is very strong. You will need tiniest amount of this paint and you'll get a lot of painting done with this little tube of paint. It's got a very pretty light color as well. And then we have Brown Mother. That seems like a very, oh yeah, that's right up my alley. Very kind of warm, toasty color with loads of interesting depth to it. So very dark and lighter color and uh, also seems to be transparent. So the color that you would go through really, really quick is the Burnt Sienna. This one is a really nice color. So out of all of them, I would say in on the first impression, this is the color to look out for, Brown Mother. Now let's have a look at Liquitex Parchment, which is a mix of PBK7, PG7, PW6, PY42. That's quite interesting how many pigments went into creating this color and it's quite sort of light. Um, so this is gorgeous color, very contemporary, right up my alley. I don't know why, but I have a feeling that I may have something similar. So I'll have a look after swatching these out just to see if there's anything similar to that color that I already own. But I have a feeling, oh yeah, it might be actually the Windsor Newton gouache in this color. And then the next one we have is light blue violet. So that's also a very gorgeous blue. I had a good look through my art supplies and basically the color that I thought of is not the Windsor Newton gouache, it's the Holbein gouache. And you can see that it's really, really similar. But let me just watch it. It's called Misty Green. So if you wanted a similar color in acrylics, you might want to consider parchment. So I'll just go next to it. It's probably a little bit more green side by side, but very, very similar. Let's have a look at the colors up close. And firstly, we have Luminance Spring Green. Blackwing Palomino. So all of these swatches right here. And then Windsor & Newton Watercolor. So now that the colors have dried, you can see that the Burnt Sienna is fairly light um, at its mass tone, but it's probably the most granulating out of all four colors. So if that's something you are after. And then we have light red and Venetian red, similar in opacity, but Venetian red is a lot more opaque. And then we have brown mother, which to me was the most interesting color just because of its mass tone depth and um, the variety that you could get in the lightness and versus darkness. Um, I thought it was really, really beautiful color. It also doesn't seem to be appearing uh, very flat, which is usually coming from more opaque colors. So it seemed to be nice and transparent. And then we have Uniposca PC3M. And then let's look at the Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics. I accidentally miss uh, title them. So it's the other way around, obviously parchment and light blue violet. So parchment is fairly similar to the gouache Holbein in misty green and it's just a touch a little bit more green than the parchment but otherwise very very similar. And light blue violet gorgeous. It's, it's hard to say whether it's more a purple or a blue so it's right bang in the middle Really beautiful color, works gorgeously together with like these sort of browns and reds. You can see it's a beautiful combo here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below which colors you liked, which you maybe didn't. And I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.